Dave, thanks so much for having us. It is brilliant to be here where it all began for you. Yeah, it's uh, 30 years, come back to the place where it all began for me. Uh, just a table over there is where I first played with my granddad when I was 10. The uh, guy behind me is in here now, Troy. He sort of uh, taught me to play when I was around 11, 12 for a few years. Uh, still great mate. So yeah, it's mad to be back here after all this time. And was buying it therefore a nostalgic decision or a business decision or a bit of both? Definitely both, yeah. The, uh, when I come in here, literally we come in here with my mates, he plays in the Burton League. Uh, the day before official lockdown, 2020 in March. I thought, blimey, oh, yeah, he still had the same feel. Is that nothing had changed in 20, 30 years? Everything is exactly the same. Still had the snooker club feel, the same smell, everything. Obviously, we went into lockdown and all that. And uh, yeah, about six months ago, the place was come up for sale again. And uh, sadly, the former owner, Alan, sadly passed away. The, the, uh, the Harrison family had the place for 35 years, I believe it was. Obviously, you know, if you can run a business for 35 years, I hope we're that successful and lucky, you know, so they did a fantastic job. So it's really quite sad at the time because Alan passed away, uh, but hopefully they're, they're really pleased with what we're managing to do to the place. And I gather you and Phil, probably more him than you, you've actually done a huge amount already that, you know, a lot of work was required. Yeah, like I say, it hadn't really changed for 30 years. So there's three of us, it's me, Phil and Neil. Um, Phil's like the gaffer, we call him the gaffer, he sorts out the money side and all the financials. I'm the dosser, I just tell him what we should be buying and spending. Uh, and, and Neil, he's like the sparky and great handyman. So yeah, we've, we've had some mega late nights in here since the Crucible, losing to Ronnie. I've, you know, we've done all night shifts in here, painting, trying to refurb up and down stairs and that's still lots to do, but we're, we're definitely getting there. And has that effort and that distraction almost been quite welcome to, to, to give you a focus away from specifically playing? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've loved getting stuck in and getting dirty again. You know, I haven't worked for eight, nine, ten years on the farm and all that. So, uh, no, I'm certainly not scared to put a bit of graft in. I've absolutely loved, we've had a good crack painting through the night, some nice long chats and all that. Um, Great to meet the locals as well, you know, there's been a really good uh, report what we're doing and that. So, uh, no, it's all been good fun so far. I'm sure, I'm sure the, now the sun's out, it's absolutely killing us. So I want the rain to come back and people back in, but uh, it's been good. And you've got some great memorabilia. So I gather you, you've called in a few favours and um, you've got a little bit of merchandise from, from off the walls at the major events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you, Rachel and Donna at World Snooker. The, uh, Mick Ganley. Um, obviously, yeah, like you say, we're calling some favours and got some proper stuff on the walls and uh, filled the walls out lovely. Thank you very much. And your table is down the same end that you first watched your granddad play. So presumably no one else will use your table. That is where you will come and practice. Yeah, my table's in the exact first spot where I first ever hit a snooker ball. Uh, so that's pretty mad after 30 years. Uh, my table is more than welcome for any member to play on it as long as they behave themselves, don't rip the cloth. It's obviously a little bit more money, but uh, it, it is for rent. Um, but we have got another star table at the other end if they want to use that one for a bit less money. When you get into the heart of the season and you're trying to do proper intense practice leading up for, a, you know, I don't know, one of, one of the big ones, say, do you think you'll be disciplined enough that you'll say, right, I, I'm now in the club as Dave, the professional player, and I'm, I'm not going to take 10 minutes to go and sort this problem out or take this phone call. Do you think you'll be able to make that distinction when you're in the building that you own and love? Yeah, no, I think we're, the place is pretty much up and running and, and, and running itself now. We've got good staff and everything. So absolutely, oh, I've literally only just got the queue out yesterday, started again. So absolutely once I'm in, in full practice mode, there's no distractions. When I come up here, it's just me and the snooker table. And uh, I've already said to a few of the punters, like, you'll probably find me pretty rude when I'm playing. Like, I won't, there's no talking, it's, it's serious stuff. You know, I want the, some of the players in the area to come and have a knock, like Selby or Woolley, good friends on the tour. So, no, it's, it's all business once I get to the table. And just, just out of interest, because some players do, some players don't, mobile phone off when you're practising? Yeah, definitely. It would become a real bad habit of mine, because obviously my practice was, I pretty, went pretty slack for the last 12 months. Uh, but before the World Championships, I was really determined to qualify for the World Championships because I was, you know, it's, it's really hard, them qualifiers. And I was a bit disappointed not to be in the 16, but it's just how it is. I hadn't played well enough, so that was fine. So literally the three weeks before the qualifiers, 
I went back to how I used to practice, re really strict. The phone definitely off from now on. What was your overall reflection? Now we're sort of, you know, a month, six weeks on from the end of last season. It wasn't a bad campaign. Winning the Championship League is brilliant. Everyone was so pleased for you to win your first ranking title. I think you had four quarterfinals. So it was an OK season, wasn't it? Yeah, we weren't a disastrous season at all. I think any season where someone like myself, you know, you've got to take the, the top four or six boys out of the equation there. They're always going to win tournaments and, and be at the big business ends, you know. I think, uh, especially in the COVID era, since we've come out of that and the lack of tournaments with China and everything, you know, it's really hard to make a, a good, good sum of money in this game now, you know. So my, my goal is always to try and get into that Players' Championship, the top 16. I think if you're hitting them events, you're doing all right. You know, obviously last year I won an event and I, I had some big runs where I really felt confident where I could maybe maybe nick another comp and it didn't quite happen, like you said, the four quarter finals kind of thing. You want, but you're better off now. I mean, look at uh, like Luca and Zing Tong, you know, they, they, they both won tournaments, but they can also go missing. For, you're better off now just winning seven straight matches, winning a tournament in the right one, and it's better than like winning 50 matches, you know. I, I don't know if that's right or wrong with the rankings. It, it, you know, Barry says he wants to make the winners uh, lucrative and all that. But um, yeah, last season certainly weren't a disaster. I'll take that for another 10 years. And it was interesting, I thought, that we had five first-time winners. I mean, what a great story uh, for Rob Milkins winning yeah. Gibraltar. And I know Joe had won a title abroad a few years ago, but the Welsh was, was massive for him as well. Yeah. Uh, there, are, there are great events up for grabs. It's not always going to be the same five or six, is it? Yeah, I mean, you've got best of seven events and things like that. Um, it does make it a bit more of an even game between all, all the very best to the, to the rest of the field, but they're not, they're not all unbeatable now. You know, everybody's seen that they can be beat. And I think your World Championships, your UKs, they're always going to be by the, the, the absolute pinnacle, I think. Um, it'd be hard to see somebody break through and win one of them, but there's a lot of good players about now. You know, people thinking people like me doing all right now, or Rob Milkins or Joe Perry, it's not because nobody can play anymore, because we're a bit older and that because the standard's so much better. We're playing a bit more often, so everyone's practicing all the time. Like 20 years ago, there was five or six events. Like I literally never played it. It isn't like that now. So even as you get older, like Mark Williams over there, I mean, he says he never plays, but for me, he's played as good as ever, you know, if he wants to say he's rubbish now. I mean, I think that's absolute nonsense. He's brilliant now, you know. Uh, you enjoy it and put the, put the work in. It, it's, uh, it doesn't matter about age anymore. It's certainly out of the window, that. Well, speaking of age then, this, this feels like it could be, it's a great project and it's also, you know, a helpful pension or, or retirement pot, but hopefully that's, that's a long way off. You're, you're someone who keeps in good shape, you look after yourself physically. How many more years do you envisage uh, still being close to or at your best? Uh, I think if I can get myself back into the mindset of like a 2019-20 where literally everything was just snooker then I could probably I think I could play some good stuff for another five or six years you know I'd like to make it to 50 making a living at the game I know I'm never going to be like a, a John Higgins or a Ronnie you know I'm not delusional in any way but if I can make a living at the game uh, I, I class that as a success um, it's just really difficult as you get older to channel everything you know I've got a kid and, uh, and this place and that but uh, no, I'm pretty determined I've, I've been making a few errors of late last couple of years so I, I want to I know, I know where I've kind of gone wrong and where I've slacked a bit so I'm going to try and get back to full full snooker mentality for a couple of years but it is quite difficult so do you feel as though you've kind of taken your eye off the ball a little bit yeah just uh, somebody that's never really enjoyed snooker you know uh, it's a very hate love relationship with it uh, I do love it I appreciate what it's given me but I know I know how hard I have to work and what I have to sacrifice to to be in a good mindset or to play well at the game you know and it takes a lot of doing it takes a lot of doing especially my age I've got other things I want to do so snooker isn't everything to me whereas I think it is to most but you've you've done a lot yeah when you think back to what was it 07 when you when you played at the crucible a little bit of a moule going on and yeah, yeah. you were having a lot of fun at that time so you know, your life could easily have gone down a slightly different route where you played for fun, you'd, you know, you'd achieved many players' ultimate dreams, you'd appeared at the Crucible, you'd played yeah. some decent snooker. It would have been very easy for you to kind of just 
veer off into snooker just being fun, but you really sort of turned it around the last 10 years and you, you're a ranking event winner and you've been to the back end of some massive tournaments. I just, um, just looking at Barry Earn took over. Barry Earn, uh, absolute legend. I've never really met the guy. I've been in a room with him, I could listen to him all day. Um, just very grateful he took over snooker. My only, my only regret in snooker isn't what I've done or the actions I've made at the wrong times and things like that in my early years. It's, so I just wish Barry Earn was around when I was 16, 17, 18, because I've, I've definitely done better than I have, you know. Because um, you have to, you're playing all the time. So we, we all owe Barry a hell of a lot. And look, there's, 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 there's a lot of positives going on. You seem like you're really enjoying this place. Would you say this is as up for it as you've felt for the start of a season for a few years? Yeah, certainly the, the whole COVID thing like completely screwed me up a little bit for whatever reasons. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I've got the queue out again now and, and I, I've, I've enjoyed it in the ball. So hopefully I can get some good knocks in and give myself a decent account of the uh, Championship League defence. Obviously that's hard because it's just short formats. But yeah, I'm looking forward to just uh, dedicating, dedicating and having some discipline about myself again because I've, I've gone a bit waywards, let's say. Well, can't wait to see you in action. Good luck for the season and I hope the continued plans for Potters go well. Cheers, Rob. Cheers.